The game of baseball is changing. Inspired by the Moneyball craze of the early 2000s, we've seen a lot of new Sabre metrics that have become a big part of how we evaluate players in today's game. But as new statistics are introduced and the game continues to evolve, some popular statistics that we've relied on for decades are now out of date. Today, I'm specifically going to focus on pitchers and the most accurate and fair ways we can evaluate them in 2021. When starting to evaluate pitchers, the first statistic we're going to want to remove is the win-loss record. This has been around for years, and it actually might be the most useless statistic in all of baseball. To prove how useless this stat is, let's look at a game from August 23rd, 2017 between the Los Angeles Dodgers and the Pittsburgh Pirates. Rich Hill was starting for the Dodgers, and he was having a pretty good night. So good that he was throwing a no-hitter. Hill got Starling Marte to ground out to complete his ninth no-hit inning, but instead of being mobbed by his teammates, he walked back to the dugout because the Dodgers didn't have a run on the board. Hill came back out to pitch the 10th inning, where he gave up a walk-off home run to Josh Harrison. His final line was nine innings, one hit, and one big fat L next to his name in the box score. Next, let's talk about Earned Run Average, or ERA. This stat has always kind of been the be-all, end-all for a good pitcher. If you have a good ERA, you're seen as a good pitcher, and vice versa. But this stat also doesn't always tell the full story. Earned runs still depend on the defense, umpires, and at sometimes the scorekeeper. We're currently watching plays that were called hits instead of errors. If these runners came around to score, they would be earned runs and raise the pitcher's ERA. This is where our new Sabre metric comes into play. The statistic we're going to be replacing ERA with is called FIP. FIP stands for Fielding Independent Pitching, and it's very similar to ERA. It goes off the same grading scale and follows the same guidelines, just with a few alterations. What FIP does is take the pitcher's strikeouts, walks, and home runs allowed and translates them into one number, just like ERA does. To dumb it all down, FIP removes the role of the defense and luck to show what a pitcher's ERA should look like. When grading someone's FIP, you can use the same scale as ERA. The MLB average would be around 4, with anything higher being poor, and anything lower being pretty good. Let's take a look at an example of how this stat really works. In 2020, Rick Porcello had a 5.64 ERA for the New York Mets. That looks pretty rough in the box score but his FIP was actually 3.32, which is actually pretty good based on the league average. This tells us that Porcello was pretty unlucky last year, and he might not have gotten much help from his defense. But FIP isn't just a stat booster for pitchers, as it does correct pitchers being punished for poor defense and luck. It is still possible for a pitcher to have a worse FIP than the ERA. In 2014, Chris Sale finished the year with a 2.17 ERA, but his FIP was higher, at 2.57. What this means is that Sale likely had a bit of traffic on the base paths, but was able to escape those jams without the runner scoring. FIP adapts very well to today's game, because we're in the era of the three true outcomes, which are home runs, strikeouts, and walks. Strikeout rates are higher than they have ever been, and the Major League batting average is the lowest it's been since 1968. FIP can also be a great indicator of whether a pitcher's success or failures are maintainable, and if they're just having a lucky or unlucky stretch. So how can you find your favorite MLB pitcher's FIP? Well, if you're a math whiz who's looking for something to do, you can follow this equation. But if you aren't, or you simply don't have the time, all of the MLB pitcher's FIP statistic is a few clicks away on sites such as Fangraphs or Baseball Reference. I'll leave the links to these sites down in the description below. So in conclusion, FIP is the best statistic for pitchers since it only evaluates them on the things that they can control. Don't be surprised if you hear more about FIP as time goes on and it gains more traction. If you have any sabermetrics you would like me to break down or explain in detail, feel free to leave a comment down below, and thanks for stopping by.